I'm afraid this is the same story as last week, doctor. My body just won't lose any fat. I'm eating 1500 calories a day, I'm doing cardio, I'm doing everything, but still on some days I'm actually gaining weight. I'm gaining weight in a deficit. Why? Why is that? Is, is, is it my metabolism? Is my, my metabolism is damaged, right? Well, I think that you are lying to yourself and you know it. When people fail to get lean, they very rarely take responsibility. They somehow forget about the night they ate birthday cake in front of the fridge. That's crazy. Or that time they got wasted with their friends. Or they forget to account some calories in general, such as oil. Well, all these little slips count. Those calories can completely offset the deficit created on the other dieting days the discipline days. But people are skeptical. They'll say, no, no, you're wrong. I am disciplined. My metabolism is just very slow. I'm not losing fat even with 1500 calories per day. Ha! Huh. I seriously doubt it. Back in 1945, a starvation study was conducted at the University of Minnesota. 36 young volunteers were fed around 1500 calories per day for 6 months. And guess what happened? They all lost a ton of weight and most of them reached 5% body fat, really close to death. And what's more, researchers discovered that their metabolism was not damaged. It did go down, but only by a maximum of 15% below what would be expected from weight loss. Not enough to offset the deficit. So when people are saying that they can't lose weight on 1500 calories, that's ridiculous. No matter if you eat carbs or fats, clean or dirty, 6 meals a day or 2 meals a day, no matter if you eat in the morning or evening, if you are in a deficit, you will lose fat. After all this evidence, if people can't accept that it's their fault, there is really not much hope for them. They'll keep having the victim mentality and never change anything. But I think most of us are not like that. We do take responsibility, but we have a different problem. We know how to do better, we just don't understand why we're not doing it. You know how to create that deficit to lose fat, and yet you always find ways to convince yourself you can have a little bit more food. You find a way to convince yourself you deserve a cheat day, or the most common excuse Oh, what the hell, I can make up for it tomorrow. We know it's wrong. Why do we do this? It's because of our mental programming. We always do what we see ourselves in our mind doing, not what we know how to do. I bet that at this very moment you know how to get in better shape. You know how to do your job better. You know how to be better with women. You know how to improve your results but you don't do it. Why? Because it doesn't feel like you, right? It doesn't fit the way you see yourself in your mind. It doesn't fit the way you live your life. Well, that is because your self-image always corresponds with your results. Let me give you my example. I never had an issue getting lean. That is because I've always seen myself lean in my mind. That is my self-image. But I couldn't see myself big and strong for a very long time. Why do you think I'm only this muscular after training for 3 years? I wasted many months hopelessly trying to gain muscle without changing my self-image. About a year ago, I would go to the gym, have a great workout and when it came time to eat and gain weight, I would convince myself not to eat big because I could gain fat. So I stayed the same. After setting a big PR the next workout, I would have these thoughts. I'm just not feeling it today. Oh man, I didn't sleep well last night. That will surely affect my strength. Oh, what if I'm overtraining? All these thoughts came crashing into my mind, causing me to have a really bad workout. So of course, I missed the lift. I missed setting a new PR. 
every time I got better results than my self-image, my behavior would unconsciously change to bring me back on track. Did I know how to do better? Did I know how to gain muscle? <laughs> you bet, I was fucking teaching others how to train and gain muscle. And they got awesome results, but I didn't. And that was because my self-image was the same. Your self-image is probably the reason why you can't get lean. If I ask you this, picture yourself at the beach this summer. Do you see yourself with your current physique or your goal physique? If you see yourself with your current physique, I can guarantee you won't get lean this summer. I don't care how much you study, I don't care who you follow, I don't care how much you know. Unless you change your self-image, every time you get a little leaner, you will get these thoughts. Oh, I'm looking so flat. I should do a refeed. I'm getting too small. I should go back to bulking. I'm feeling so weak. <laughs> I should eat more. These seem to be your logical thoughts, but they really aren't. That is the way your self-image brings you back to your normal results. It is through the voice of reason. But you must understand that that voice is lying to you. You need to recognize that those thoughts are created by your old mental conditioning. They are not yours. They are not you. So, how do you change your self-image? You do it through awareness and imagination. Awareness is transformative in and of itself. The simple fact that you now know how your self-image controls your life gives you the power to change. From now on, now that you know this information, you no longer have to believe every thought you get. Don't identify yourself with your mind. Awareness is transformative in and of itself. Always look to become more aware. And imagination, imagination is where you create your new life. Right now, stop whatever it is you're doing and take a piece of paper and divide it in two. On the left side, write your current physique. Underneath it, write your current habits, the habits that you do daily that gives you this physique. Because your results always correspond with certain actions. You are doing some actions that bring you your current results. Now, on the right side, write your goal physique. And underneath that, write all the habits required for you to reach your goal. Now take a step back and look at the differences. You now see what needs to be changed in your life for you to reach your goal. Every time you get a thought rationalizing why you shouldn't do something written on the right side, know that is a lie and ignore it. The actions required for your goal feel like dreadful disciplines only when your goal is not your self-image. If your self-image is your goal, you're not disciplined. You're just being yourself. 